Money is the most important subject intellectual persons can investigate and reflect upon. It is so important that our present civilization may collapse unless it is widely understood and its defects are remedied very soon. Robert Hemphill from the Federal Reserve All the perplexities, confusions, and distresses in America arise not from the defects in the Constitution or Confederation, nor from the want of honor or virtue, as such from as much from downright ignorance of the nature of coin, credit, and circulation. John Adams The study of money, above all other fields in economics, is one in which complexity is used to disguise truth, or evade truth, not to reveal it. John Kenneth Galbraith The last duty of a central banker is to tell the public the truth. Alan Blinder, Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve Of all the contrivances for cheating the laboring classes of mankind, none has been found more effectual than that which deludes them with paper money. Daniel Webster the modern banking system manufactures money out of nothing. The process is perhaps the most astounding piece of sleight of hand that was ever invented. Banking was conceived in inequity and born in sin. But if you want to continue to be slaves of the bankers and pay the cost of your own slavery, then let the bankers continue to create money and control credit. Josiah Charles Stamp, who was the second richest man of England at the time. Money is the new form of slavery and it is distinguishable from the old simply by the very fact that it's impersonal. There is no human relation between master and slave. Leo Tolstoy It is well enough that the people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe that there would be a revolution tomorrow morning. Henry Ford When it is a question of money, everybody is of the same religion. Voltaire People used to come to this country because we didn't have any oppressive taxes, any expensive kings or elite to support, no compulsory military service, and no police state putting people in dungeons. And that's what made this country great. Everybody escaped uh, the old world to come to the new world, to start a new life, and to live free. You're going to learn in this module about how money works for the elite and against you. This should be taught to every kid in every school every year. This should be reported on the news every night but that does not serve the elite's interest. Our schools teach us about reading, writing, math, sex, political correctness, following the rules, but not the most single most important lesson which makes us ultimately su successful in life, which is the study of money. I got a bunch of money too. Oh, I, I like money. Yeah. I like money though. I like money. I like money. I like money. Can't believe you like money. Have you ever thought of why our school system would teach sex education to kids in 4th and 5th grade and, and teach them about drugs in 6th and 7th grade? I think studies have found that actually by teaching kids at younger ages those subjects, it actually gets them more interested in those subjects. Uh, and yet, balancing a simple checkbook is probably one of the most important skills that a citizen can learn to keep them out of trouble, to teach them how to save and important facts like uh, learning about compounding interest and how dangerous it is and how, how credit cards should be avoided. But again, that does not serve the elite's interests. Money serves three key roles in society. It acts as a medium of exchange, a unit of account, a standard of value, or a measuring stick, so to speak. And also, it acts as a store of wealth. Money must be durable, not easily counterfeited, relatively scarce, but not too scarce, easily transportable, divisible without destroying value. Just about everything has been used as, mo as money throughout human history. Shells, beans, stones, feathers, animals, even cigarettes have been used as money. But gold and silver became the most common form of money due to its natural characteristics. They're relatively scarce, easily divisible, and they held value. And most importantly of all, they were universally accepted as money. Goldsmiths used to refine and produce gold and silver coins, and they naturally became a natural depository of wealth inside their safes. When people deposited their real money, the gold and silver, into the vault, they were given a receipt declaring how much was deposited. Soon people just used the receipts for the money instead of carrying the bulky coins. Because of the paper money that was being used in commerce, the real money never left the vault. Soon, goldsmiths realized that very rarely did people take their real money out and never did all the customers do it all at once. Then they got an idea. 
they can not only loan out the, his money at interest, he could also loan out other people's money at interest and make much more money. As long as the deposits were repaid, nobody was the wiser. But soon people came suspicious of these goldsmiths and demanded their real money out of his vaults. But instead of letting that go down, the goldsmiths offered to cut the depositors in on the game and provided that they kept their money in the bank. The depositors were now paid interest from the borrowers, and now the goldsmiths became a banker. The banker even became even more bold, lending money on gold and silver that wasn't even there. So originally he started lending his money at interest, then he started lending his depositors money at interest, now he started lending money that didn't even exist at interest. Again, as long as everyone did not come in at the same time, the game went on. But when all the paper claims on wealth came back to the banks, and there was not enough gold and silver in their vaults, the jig was up. The elite saw the power of this banking system, and through government, legitimized it by regulating this counterfeiting scheme. They institutionalized fractional reserve banking. Different kinds of money. Gresham's law is when bad money drives good money out of circulation. Fiat, or bad money, is spent and gotten rid of, while commodity, good money, is saved and hoarded. It is natural for people to want to protect their wealth from debasement. So basically, when a government introduces a new fiat currency or a paper money scheme, that money tends to be used for transactions as gold or commodity money is tended to be hoarded and taken out of circulation. Gold is an example of good money because it does not require legal tender laws to support its value. It has all the characteristics of money and is universally accepted. In fact, if we were on a gold standard, we would no longer need central banks and it would act as a restraint on a rapacious government. 